Hello, I'm Lucy from Bookshanks and it's been a little while since I've made a video, not a huge amount of time, but I promised you one in just a couple of days, this one, I'll get onto it in a minute, but um, do you know what? I've, I've had trouble reading, I've just been so incredibly busy, so um, I haven't read too much. I did finish this one, I've started Nightcrawling uh, by Leela, oh I can't remember her name, Oh no, I can't remember her name, it's not on the shelf. By Leela, um, it's in my wrap video, my TBR video, I shall link that, this isn't a good start, is it? Should I just go into the review? Basically, I'm saying I haven't read lots, that's why there's not been lots of videos, but I'm going away for a few days, so I'm gonna stack them all up um, into my suitcase, foregoing the clothes in order to take books. I'm gonna catch up, and when I get back, I'm gonna read loads, although, actually, Side note, I still don't have um, Jessie Burton's House of Fortune in my grubby little mitts yet. Um, even though it came out last week, I ordered it from Waterstones um, and they're having like major distribution issues, aren't they? I think like they're able to ship nothing out. So I know out there in the big wide world, um, you guys are waiting for Waterstone books too. Waterstones, pull your finger out. Don't know what the problem is. They're probably having a bit of a nightmare. I don't think they're having a good week. Um, and in other news, in the UK, isn't it hot? Oh my goodness, it's incredibly, incredibly hot. Not compared to hot countries, like actual proper hot countries, but for England, for Great Britain, it's very, very hot. Um, so I'll make this quick so that then I can go and have an ice cream. Anyway, none of that matters. I'm here to talk about This Time Tomorrow by Emma Straub, um, which yeah, took me a really long time to read. And anyone who's seen my last few videos will have seen me said, um, seen me say, that every time I tried to talk about this book, I could not remember, for the life of me, what it was called. And then when it came to my TBR video, I couldn't remember, for the life of me, what the character was called, and I was halfway through the book. And I think that sort of, kind of, might be a little bit indicative of how I feel about this book. Um, there were things that I liked, but ultimately, is this gonna be a spoiler, the great reveal? I think it might be a little bit forgettable. Right, so, it's basically a time travel story. It's a, it's a story about travelling through time. Um, our hero is called Alice, remember her name now, and she is on the, um, the eve of her 40th birthday. It is the cusp of her 40th birthday, and she's dealing with all these sort of thoughts about, um, you know, has she made the most of her life? Is she stagnating? She... Um, she went to a very posh private school um, and she's still working there all these years later and she's seeing her classmates come back with their children and she's still single, she's living in like a one bed basement flat and she just feels like maybe this is not where she's meant to be. The other big thing going on in her life is that her father is um, basically on his deathbed um, and she, she grew up just with her father um, her mother was absent and she's having a really hard time dealing with sort of what she knows is about to come. So it's the eve of her 40th birthday. Little twist before you even get started, her father um, was an extremely famous novelist. He only ever wrote one novel but it went stratospherically big and it was about time travel, the Time Brothers. There's actually a quote, like the little, the little quote at the beginning is from his book and I was like who the heck is Leonard what's his face and then it all comes it all becomes clear so he wrote a book about time travel he knows his stuff on the eve of Alice's 40th birthday she gets wildly drunk with her best friend um, and she falls asleep and she wakes up instead on her 16th birthday um, and the story then sort of unfolds with her um, going backwards and forwards between her 40th birthday and her 16th birthday. And as she changes things, and not big things, but as she does little different things um, deliberately on her 16th birthday, she is trying to find a way in which she makes her 40-year-old self more satisfied. Um, and an enormous part of that is how she is sort of trying to change the 16 year old present in order to prevent this point in her life where her father's about to die. It's about her sort of like getting the most time possible she can with her father and sort of really getting to know him 
and um, yeah, seeing if you know she can make him stop smoking and drinking and other things that prolong his life. But ultimately, um, you know, whether she manages to do that. It's set in New York um, between like modern day, and I think it's like 1996. So there's like lots of pop culture references going on in there. Um, if you're around in 1996 that you might, you know, enjoy and recognize. Um, but that's basically the setting. It's a very recognizable one other than, you know, a little bit of time travel thrown in. Um, the characters, Alice is a good one. It took me a little while to warm to her because she's got quite this detached voice. Um, and she's in lots of ways very privileged and although she's like stagnated a little bit of me was like she's a bit moany um, to start with but I did warm to her and sort of the more you got to know her and her relationships with the people around her because the relationships were great um, I did I did definitely warm to her it didn't take me loads and loads of time um, she's got obviously she's got her father as a, as a key character her boyfriend who's probably the weakest I think he's like a little bit two-dimensional you know in terms of like is he going to propose is he not going to propose sort of that type of little bit of cliche going on um, that you see quite often so he wasn't fabulous but I did like the relationship between them um, and her best friend as well Sam who was her best friend at age 16 and is her best friend now that was a good relationship like that a lot they're the big ones I think um, and her, her on-off boyfriend at age 16 as well um, does come into play to varying degrees. Um, the style, it's, it is excessively written, it's not overtly literary but it's, you know, it feels like quality and rich and there's loads of description um, which does slow the pace down a little bit but it makes a really vivid world and it kind of is it's quite nostalgic when you're going back to like 96. It's got sort of that like a little bit rose tinted vibe to the language and the description, which there's loads of, um, which I did quite enjoy. In terms of the themes, I think this is where possibly it starts to unravel for me a little tiny teeny bit um, because I just felt like there was so much going on in there. So the big one is grief. Um, and she's looking at, you know, like how to deal with her grief about her father, her like sole parent really passing away. But we're also looking about sort of like the complexity of friendships as we get older and what we lose along the way um, when life, grown up life takes over. We're looking at, you know, sort of ambition and the failure of ambition and, you know, is the grass greener and, um, you know, are we always looking for the next thing when we should be living in the moment? Should we always, you know, trying to change things? Um, there's so many themes sort of that are crammed in there. I can't think of the others. I know I had like a big long list of them. Um, but there's so much crap crammed in there that part of me was like, actually, do you know what? If you're trying to do a little bit less, it might be better. And actually, as the novel progressed and grief came out as like the enormous big one, I was like, yeah, that's done really well. But at the start, I was like, where are we going? What are we, what, what's like, what are we here to think about? Because there was so much in there. And I sort of almost wanted it to just be that like one core theme throughout. Um, and ultimately, when I'm talking about this out loud, it sounds really good, doesn't it? And it was good. It wasn't bad, but I just have this feeling um, that I'm not going to remember it that, you know, it was an entertaining enough read whilst whilst it was going, you know, I was turning the pages, I was, you know, interested to see what happened to a point, but I just think, I'm not, I'm not going to remember this in a week, a month, a year, it's just not going to be that, that one for me, and I know that she's um, really best-selling, this is, is it her fourth or fifth novel, um, I've not read her before, but, you know, I had a quick scan of the reviews afterwards, and there's loads, and they're really, really positive, so maybe it's just, you know, it's a me thing, um, but I like the time travel element, other than the fact, actually, do you know what, the most unbelievable bit of it for me, in terms of the time travel bit, I bought that, that was fine, was that there's a cat that's in 1996, and also in 2022, and that, I mean, it's acknowledged as being an old cat, but what, that is an extremely, extremely old cat. I couldn't get my head around that fact. Um, plot hole. Um, it's called Ursula, though. She's a good cat name. Uh, and yeah, that's it. That's my feelings about this book, really. It was fine. It was fine. I'm sorry, Emma. It was all right. I'm sure lots of people will like it. If, you know, it's a reasonably easy read. Um, you know, touching on some big themes in a not too depressing way. And that's it. Didn't love it. 
sorry. Um, I'm loving what I'm really that reading now though. It's Nightcrawlers by Leela, whose second name I can't believe remember, but it begins with M. And I'm gonna finish it while I'm away, and I'm gonna come back, and I'm also gonna read The Sea Women. They are my objectives for being away, even though I have other stuff to do when I'm away, but it's fine. That's what I'm gonna read, and I'll come back, I promise, slightly more efficiently with my reviews. Anyway, tell me what you thought if you've read it. Tell me what you thought. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!